Uh, I would like to thank a few of the members uh, who have actually invited us to organize this workshop at uh, Rajput. The first, uh, first workshop was in 2013, and a lot of us actually met there, and so it's nice to be back to Rajput again. Uh, thank you, Dr. Pavaria, Dr. Chetna, uh, Dr. Vandana, who actually was uh, helping us with the workshop uh, tomorrow. Uh, Dr. Asit Vashna, I uh, don't think he's here. And obviously, Dipti and Hazel, who has taken a lot of, you know, their time, their efforts to really make this a success. Well, it will be a success, surely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to uh, begin with, we will like to start with the basics of uh, PNS. Uh, this is something which uh, a lot of people would like to use or, or are using. Uh, some already are experts. It's it's wonderful. I think I think there is a magic in PNS. You take a little. <laughs> you start poking. <laughs> you poke. You poke, you poke, and suddenly there is next ah, yes! <laughs> okay, it is, it is a wonderful, wonderful feeling actually when you see the response. Okay, so I, I used to say, okay, Arushan, I've just come back from uh, Delhi, where we actually held a, uh, a cadaver and Arushan very workshop. The difference between the PNS and, and Arushan, uh, I describe it this way. Okay, with PNS, okay, you go poke, poke, and poke, and then go ah. Whereas with ultrasound, you actually put an ultrasound probe, you see the nerve, and then you keep poking, 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 and then go ah because you actually have to wait for that moment where you see the local anesthetic around the nerve. There is actually no difference actually in the outcomes in most. Still, now no studies have been able to say that one is safer than the other. People used to say the ultrasound, you can actually see the local anesthetic and okay, where you're depositing, but still they're equally there. So, so let's start with PNS as well. So basics of PNS. Uh, my name is Shiv Kumar Singh, okay? I, I will come from Liverpool, uh, because I know we, a lot of us are, are members of the group, know each other, but also there are other members who are not and I'll tell about the group in the, during the tea time, something about how the group. Now if you look at a peripheral nerve stimulators, okay, these stimulators actually apply or deliver a current near the, near the nerves. So obviously there are a lot of wires involved, and there's a circuit green mode, and they need to deliver a current between anywhere from zero to five milliamps. That is for using for PNS. But some nerve stimulators will also have other facilities. They might actually combine it with the uh, neuromuscular blocking and where you can actually increase the current to almost 60 milliamps, 30 to 60 milliamps. So this is a huge current. But here, it is delivered in a pulses, okay? So you can choose a frequency between one and two hertz. That means either one pulse a second or two <coughs> pulse a second. One hertz is one pulse a second, two hertz is two pulse within a second. And the duration of the pulse it should last between 0 0.1 to 1 millisecond. Now most of them, some of like, if you look at the nerve stimulators, some give you this choice, but there are others like budget which will likely only deliver it 0.1 millisecond. And that is a very safe current. The thing is, it should not never go above 0.3 milliseconds. So if you're choosing, choose just, just 0.1 millisecond. You might actually have to go higher only if the patient has got something like a a neuropathy, uh, okay, or patient has got diabetic neuropathy, or there's a hypoosmolar states. Where it is difficult to stimulate, you might actually also have to increase the current. So like I say, there are different types. I just showed two, but obviously there are different companies producing it. <laughs> um, but they, most of them have similar characteristics. Same, same as ultrasounds. There's so many ultrasounds, but they need to have some basic functions. Similarly with this, these are two, three things we need to know. So I'm going to show you one of the basic ones. So this is a common nerve, uh, the nerve stimulator which a lot of people have told me they use. Brown is actually a popular uh, company which uh, they use. And so what we start off with is the current. Okay, first we need to set the current. Okay, I've heard people starting with two milliamps. Some say we go higher, so 
But actually, you don't actually have to go beyond 1.5 milliamps. That's what we have been using for years. That is safe current. If you have a awake patient, you can even start with your 1 milliamp. If you are very good with your anatomy, if you got X-ray eyes, <laughs> or ultrasonic eyes, <laughs> you can see the nerve, <laughs> then you can go with the lower current. But most of the time, 1.5 milliamp starting current is very good. And obviously, every, every PNS machine should have a current which is shown how much is it delivered. And even better, if they actually have something which monitors, that is, you set the current, and it only shows the current when you actually start poking the tissues. That means as it completes the tissues. So you set the current, and once you actually set it, it goes back to zero. But as soon as you start touching the needle to the tissues, it detects the resistance or the impedance in the body, okay, and then starts delivering the current. And it should be the same as that is set on the, on the uh, machine. If it is not doing that, that means there is something wrong, there is increased impedance. But most machines, if they are serviced regularly, will give you exactly what has been set on the, on the machine. I've talked about a uh, stimulation pulse like this monitor. Okay, This one actually gives you a choice of 0 0.1, 0 0.3, and 1 million millisecond. Okay. So 0 0.1 millisecond normal patients is fine. But if you actually have got a patient who is who's got a, uh, is neuropathic, then you might actually have to go for a higher current. Okay, it's not that you would do it, you, you couldn't see the nerve with your eyes. <laughs> your ultrasound vision wasn't working. <laughs> it is just that and they require higher current to stimulate. Okay. Next is the frequency. Okay. One and two hertz. We normally recommend that you use two hertz. It's for the reason that once you're in the nerve, you want to fine tune it, you want to go into that, you actually have to have a quicker response. Now suppose you are actually getting a response, which is, this is like a one hertz response, you go. Okay, that's the kind of, every, every sort of uh, 60, uh, sort of uh, one, one second you get one, one uh, response. Whereas if you are two hertz, you get a quicker response and you're able to fine tune it better. So we recommend that you use two hertz. What is it, this got to do with CNN? There's no news, there's no breaking news like our star news and things give you. Every time there's a breaking, there's no breaking news. CNN is, is about how the anode and cathodes are placed, okay. So C is for cathode, cathode is a positive electrode, and this is attached to the body. And the negative electrode is a needle electrode, so that's why it says CNN, okay, C cathode. And then is a negative or, or needle cathode, okay. Uh, so that is where the needle is attached. And once you actually does it attach them, that's when the circuit gets completed. So using a PNS, so it's showing that in this, I don't think you're able to see it clearly, but that is actually set of 1.5. Like you're getting a response, and you start start reducing the, the current. Okay. You go to a 0.5. Okay. Now what happens? What would you do if the current stops at around say you got a beautiful response? You put it 1.5, the patient is kicking. Kicking your, <laughs> kicking your assistant. <laughs> Sometimes you get that kind of response, okay. And then you start reducing the current. Okay, disappears. What do you do then? Hmm? You're not near the nerve. You're, you're not, not near the nerve, okay. Right. Then in that case, you need to actually very fine tune. Okay, so what you do is you actually do an increment. A lot of time people actually start okay, going straight back up and down. So the trick is you actually keep producing it. Okay, so for example, the current now disappears at one milliamp. Okay, it doesn't matter. Increase it a bit. Okay, okay, and move it a little bit more. Okay, and so you should get the same kind of response as you were guessing before. Okay, and then start producing it further. Till you get down to around 0.4 to 0.5.
Now, what happens now if you actually have gone in and then you're getting, still getting response at point one? You're probably in the nerve, okay. But you're not necessary. Sometimes you can be in the nerve, okay, between the fascicles, and you may not get any response at all. Okay, so you have to be careful with how we use, use the uh, PNS for that. Well, obviously, okay, if you're getting a strong stimulus, you would actually come out of it, go in again. And they will say that, I mean, if you look at the textbook, some will say that 0.3 is actually quite safe. But never go down below 0.3. But what we have been advocating throughout is that we are happy with a, our 0.4 or 0.5. With 0.4 or 0.5, you can actually get a pretty good response. Sometimes it may be delayed response. And you might actually have to wait. But if you're using four analogies here, you can be sure it will it'll work. Things are changing even in ultrasound. Now you are saying that oh, we need to be around the nerve. We need to actually be you know, depositing local anesthetic very, very close to the, to the nerve and see a halo around the nerve. We call it a donut sign. And you want to say, no, no, don't worry about it. As long as you're in the right facial plane, local anesthetic will reach the nerves. And they will work. So like I said, keep it simple, setting at around uh, uh, two hertz, not one hertz. I put it around there, maybe it is two hertz. Uh, current is set at 0.1 millisecond. And you start with one, 1 1.5 milliamps. And you start reducing the current. And I'm hopeful that you still get a response at 0.4 to 0.5 and inject the local anesthetic. But you've been, like you were very good anatomy. You have been to uh, lectures, you've been to anatomy labs, you're fantastic with your anatomy, uh, your X-ray eyes, your ultrasound eyes are working, and you still don't get a response. You know that, you should be getting a response. You know that your needle is somewhere near the nerve. You are expecting the legs to be kicking away, but you don't, you're not getting it. What do you think is wrong? Circuit Okay, it can be circuit, yeah, anything else? There would be anything wrong. Low energy. Hmm? Low energy. Low? Battery. Battery, yes, yes, battery could be low. And some of the some of the monitors will actually tell you that. When you can press the battery, it'll tell you that the battery is low, so check that. Yeah. Anything else? Maybe the diabetic Yes, diabetic. So it could be a patient itself. Okay. But it could be anatomical causes. Yes, you have read a very good textbook, but body doesn't behave like a textbook. Okay, how many times have you seen that the femoral nerve lying not near the artery, but far away from the, from the even in normal, okay, it, it get displaced in fractures for sure. Okay, but even in normal people, you can actually see the nerves lying away from them. Sometimes nerves do not originate from where you think they should. There are a lot of anatomical variations. Okay. So yes, it can be frustrating at times. Okay. But this is very small percentage, so don't worry about it. But it could be. Okay. Um, is, is the machine okay? All right. So we talked about battery. Okay, that is the first thing you need to check. Okay, you use it quite a lot. You do hundreds and thousands of blocks, but forgot when to last to change the battery. Okay make sure the battery is fine. But the most important thing is, is checking the circuit. Is the circuit complete? Okay. It could be the leaves are the commonest cause for us for actually not getting a response. It happens very often. Okay. You need to take care of your machine. Okay, don't pull things off. Okay. Be, be gentle with it. Try to, for the man, treat it like your wife. <laughs> Please it once once a while. <laughs> okay, be gentle with it. Be gentle with it. Okay, the, the leaves can break. Now for some machines, I will draw a demonstrate tomorrow. I have actually got a machine uh, from Pajan. And they actually come with something which will allow you to test the machine outside the patient. Not all machines do that. Some machines have got the built-in feature. 
like I said, you attach it and then you actually see the current only shows when the circuit is complete. Very good feature. Okay. Sensing mode. But you should be able to test it outside as well. Sometimes that is not there in the machines.